tools, what are they? Pulley. Pulley. A wedge, oh. a lever, and a wheel and axle. Very good. Oh, and Will you and pull the oh, blind down? Are we missing one? And a screw. And a screw. Oh, we forgot that one this morning. Whoa. Very good. Here. So what we did today was I started by, or we started by, activating prior knowledge. So I started by sort of reviewing what we had learned over the last couple of weeks on Simple Machines. And from there, that sort of opened up our world of um, the arts for us. Once we had activated prior knowledge, what we did was we moved on to the movement portion of our lesson. I asked you to think about a Simple Machine. Think about how it moves. <laughs> Think about how it makes life, our lives, easier. Visualize, keep that machine up here. And then I want you to imagine that machine moving. Anyone visualize a pair of scissors working? Anyone visualize? Lily, did you visualize a pair of scissors? I did. I love her. Come on up. Can somebody help Lily with the scissors? to become the scissors. Oh, oh. Trevor, would you come up? Again. Yep. <laughs> you are going to become the scissors. Oh, good. Now I want you to think about the fulcrum, the fixed part of that lever. Which parts of their body could be the fulcrum? Sort of at their belly button. So we need their belly buttons to sort of be together. Ooh. Become the scissors. Well done. Let's give him a hand. Good work. My simple machine out in the garden, I'd be using it like this. In, push down. In, push down. In. So Natalie's our wedge. So we need you to sort of, the bottom has to be pointy, right? You are Jacob the handle, right? So you're the lever part of it. Good work. Nice work. In a minute, I'm going to send you off with a partner. I want you and your partner to talk and say, which machine can we use our bodies to move like? I want you to act like that simple machine or move like that simple machine. And I want you and your partner to think of one simple machine, not the simple machine, that only you visualized, it, you have to work with your partner and you have to decide together. Which one are we going to pick? It was challenging because, because I had a whole lot in mind. Like I had gears, I had pulley, I had wedge and lots more. Students have worked in pairs and they've worked together to become their machine. There again. Where, where it's always in the middle of the wheel. And there's a very old kind of wheel. Yeah, it's the old fashioned kind of wheel. Wheel and axle. Yeah. I'm the axle, you're the wheel. A flagpole. Okay. Okay. So, Jacob, stand up. Stand up. Go like this. And Michael, when, when, when we go get the flag, you you just pull right here like you're pulling like you're pulling the flag down, okay? Okay. So now what we plan on doing is presenting those movements to the rest of the class, and the, other, the rest of the class is going to try and decipher what exactly, what machine they've become. Well, it was difficult for me because Amelia, she wanted to do wheels, and I wanted to do wedges. Um, I did a wheel and axle with my friend Natalie, and it was very complicated and hard, and it hurt. It hurt because my elbows got rug burn, because I was rolling and put my elbows down, it hurt. And so what I wanted them to do, I wanted my students to really get a sense of, as far as pacing, so how quickly or how slowly 
do these simple machines move? Um, I wanted them sort of to develop a, a sense of their body awareness. So when these machines are moving, how high or how low are they moving? She's got something. Yes, Nat, what do you think? A pulley. Yes! Yeah. It's a pulley. You Very said. good. Now normally when I use a pulley or when I've seen pulleys, they're, up in, they're higher up in the air. So maybe what we could do is we could take that pulley from the ground and could we lift it up? Move it up and do it in the air. Let's, let's give them a second and see if they can figure this out. Wonderful. My favorite was the movement because we got to use some different objects like my string and the flagpole because my mom teaches a drama class, and I'm very interested in drama, so they use a lot of props, just like we did in what, we, in what our movement was. I think the students were very engaged. I mean, if you looked, um, as they were working in groups, you could see them talking about different simple machines. Um, there was discussion about the parts of a simple machine. I noticed one group, um, as they made their lever, they talked about where the fulcrum could be, um, how can we put these two parts together. I heard a lot of talk about which way do we move, how quickly do we move, and those were all the things that I wanted to see and wanted to hear. I like working in groups because the whole group, if they work together, they'll help each other. From the movement portion, what we wanted to do, what I wanted to do was take them over to um, the visual arts. The favorite part of the lesson was, for me was uh, doing the artwork because doing art is my favorite thing. My favorite part was sketching because it helps me um, do better sketching the same. Uh, the next task for my students was to take a photograph of two hands which um, were meant to be holding a simple machine and to design or sketch their own simple machine. So I asked them to visualize what could those hands be holding. What I had them do is to work in pencil um, and I think that's a good opportunity just for them to be, become comfortable with what's happening. Um, become comfortable with visualizing, uh, using their perspective, experimenting, and draw it in pencil first where they could feel free to erase, make changes, um, ask for comments and suggestions. As far as, as the teacher goes, my job would be to go around and provide them with feedback, suggestions, comments, um, and I think that's an important part of the learning process for them, to be able to go back revise, make changes, and that is called the creative process. Grade twos, did you hear that word yeah. I heard on there? Perspective? Yeah. It's how you see it. And so when you're looking down, I want you're gonna need to visualize. If you were looking down at that wheel, what would you see? What lines would you see? Look at what you really see when you're looking down at the, at the wheel. Really, what do you see? Do we see the side of the wheel? Yep. Do we? Kind of. If we're holding it, looking down at the wheel, an axle? Yes, we see it. What do we see? No. We see the wheel. We see the top of it, don't we? You're going to take your photograph of hands, and when you look at the hands, decide, what could these hands be doing? What work could they be doing? What could they be holding? And what I want you to do then is to go back and to sketch your simple machine. In the next version, we introduced a new media, which was the charcoal pencils. In and of itself provided a lot of excitement for the kids using something new. What we did was we gave them a chance to experiment with the charcoal pencils first. And once they had an opportunity to experiment, then they took them and away they went and they created their design, their sketch. The hammer has a lever on it. The threads of the screws in it is like an inclined plane. A little inclined plane wrapped around it. At the bottom of the screw, there's a wedge.
So you noticed how one side was curved and you know, knew that the other side needed to have that same curve, right? To keep the perspective. Very good. I need some friends to come up and I want you Can to I sort of look at other people's artwork and maybe give them some suggestions. An important part of this whole lesson was to have my students bring back their first, their sort of rough copy or rough design that they had done and to share it and present it. And we use that as an opportunity to provide each other with suggestions. Uh, for some of them, it was a, real, a time just for a good pat on the back, a confidence booster. Trevor, you should have um, put this side's handle down so it could be more symmetry, because if you look... More okay. symmetrical? Yeah, because that, the one on this side, this side um, is a little bit higher than the other one. That was sort of our practice. And you did a beautiful job Wonderful, wonderful sketching. What I'd like you to do now in a minute is you're going to go and do sort of a, a I don't know, what, what should we call it? Our good copy. Good copy? Our artist copy? Yeah. Our, the artist dream copy? copy? Extremely copy. Yep. Great copy. The great copy? Well, I don't awesome know if, if a piece of artwork is ever perfect, because every time we look back at it, we always say, oh, maybe I'd change this. I might do this a little differently next time. Sometimes students have this idea that it has, it's right or it's wrong, and it's not, especially when it comes to the visual arts. Um, it's what you see and what, and what you believe to be the best that you can do and your vision. I'm going to use a ruler to make the handle more the same size. See how I'm leaving it away from the thumb? Yeah. Go like this, and then you can just trace over this after. Go like that, and then that, and then I go like this, and this. So I don't put it through the thumb, because that would hurt. It would look like the rope through my thumb. So it would look like this. I see those little lines that sort of show the texture on the rope. So in our classroom, we have a classroom blog, and the students have their own individual blogs, and that's a, a, a very important component of, of our arts program. And often what we do is highlight some of their work. Um, on our blog, we have a what we call a virtual art gallery, and they're asking, can we take it? Can we post it on our blog? Um, and so for them, that's a leadership opportunity as well because they can take their work and they can share it with not only the world, but I can take it and I can share it with other students and say, you know, this is what we worked on last year. Here's some of the things that we've learned from our, our work that we've done. Students have also taken their artwork and they've posted on it on their individual blogs and they've left sort of a comment about what we've learned, um, one of the examples that I think of is they, they did one activity where they made a symmetrical smile. So they did half of a face and the symmetrical smile was the other half of the face. So we posted, they posted the pictures on their blog. Uh, they made a little comment as to what it was and why we did it. And the best part is their friends can go in and leave comments for them. And so that's that whole idea of being able to present what they've done. They've created and presented. Grade twos, I think the best part about doing artwork like this is being able to share it, isn't it? A gallery I'm, walk. Why don't we have a gallery walk? So here's something I want you to do for me. I want you to look at the sketches that you've done of your simple machines, and I want you to find the one that has something you're really, really proud of. I always think the best part of any piece of art, the art that we create is being able to present it and to share it. And so for us today, it was the gallery walk that we did. And you'll notice um, they put their, uh, their name on three little sticky notes. And one of the suggestions was, if there's something that you really like or something you want to tell that person about their piece of their artwork, um, put your sticky note on it. The 
important part of that whole activity of our gallery walk and using the vocabulary and terminology is for, also for me to provide them with feedback um, to evaluate what have they taken from the lesson. Are they familiar with the, the vocabulary? Uh, do they understand the key concepts? And that's also an opportunity for me to step back and say, um, what, do I need, what do we need to work on next? What's our next step? Where do we go from here? And so that is really exciting. When I can step back and I can say, I know exactly where we need to go from here because um, we've done our gallery walk and they've highlighted some of the key things. And I know there's some students who I need to go back and I need to spend some additional time on certain things with, and that's fine. You know? So the connection that I'm making with the science is first of all to the dramatic art. And that's where I can engage my students by having them move, right? It, it get them engaged in the, as far as the movement goes and moving and becoming the machine that they, they are. Um, and also it relates to the uh, visual art because of the sketching that I had them do and, and looking for the use of line. My advice to a generalist teacher is put your fears to the side. It's about student learning. I look for any opportunity where I can take uh, some of the, uh, the areas that we're working on in math, in science, in language, and that's our springboard to the arts. So as a generalist teacher, it does present some challenges as I don't have a background in the arts, but I realize that if I can connect what we are doing in other areas of the curriculum to the arts, it becomes that much more meaningful for my students. And boy, does it ever engage them.